Hi everyone, and welcome to the talk on What is the Problem Anyway? by Sue Ann May Phillips. I'm Nancy Soon, your moderator for this session. Throughout the talk, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A, which is at the bottom of your screen. We will take your questions and Sue Ann will answer them live during the session. Sue Ann is the writer of a children's series, The Grady Bear Adventures Books, that open doors to conversations between parent and child, or educators and children. As the mummy to a 13-year-old daughter, Suen understands the importance of defining problems clearly and seeking innovative solutions, which she conveys in her books. A certified coach with the International Coach Federation, she is also a business owner. Suen, welcome to the Singapore Open National Invention Convention 2020. Today's topic is so relatable to our inventors, educators, and parents. You were judging three teams yesterday and heard from the inventors on their problem definitions. I can't wait to hear from you, your perspective of how books and storytelling can help our inventors. So over to you, Sue Ann. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, first, I want to say thank you, Nancy, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to uh, be part of this uh, invention convention, the Singapore Open Nationals. It was really a privilege for me to be part of the judging process yesterday, uh, listening to the children share their ideas and really pitch something that they've put in some effort to and watch them how they have grown and progressed. And I've also learned a lot from them and the way they think. It's amazing how, you know, um, young children can think in a way an inventor would, and it really sets them on a different way of thinking. So very happy to be part of this again. And uh, thank you for having me here today. And uh, so we are on the last legs. This is really the finishing lines. You know, it's five long days of judging, of pitching, of listening to each other. And for many of us, we are going to be going, this is, this is the end, this is the finishing line. And I say, yay, that is true. But here's the thing, you know, for many of us, whether we are parents or whether we are um, educators or whether we are friends, we know that the invention process is not going to end today. You know, it, and it didn't start five days ago. And for many of us, it didn't even start five weeks ago. It could have been a much longer process. So, but the question here and the challenge ahead of us is, so what's going to happen after we cross this finishing line? What's next for us? You know, and, and as much as we want to celebrate the closing of today's uh, invention convention, you know, I like to put it forth to you that the invention journey is going to go on in our lives. The question is how, you know, if a fire has been lit in your children, if a fire has been lit in your heart, if you are an inventor, how can you keep this invention spirit in you going? You know, and this is what today is about. And uh, as we end off this wonderful uh, session, I'd like to just share with you an idea and it's for something for you to consider how you can allow the whole invention process to continue in your life. And it really begins from the very beginning, which is really a problem identification. What's the problem? So I'm many things, but here I am in the capacity of a storyteller. And I'd like to share with you the power of storytelling. Right. Storytelling is a wonderful way to engage someone else, but it is also a wonderful way for ourselves to immerse ourselves in such that we can be curious and we can also use our imagination. And most importantly, we can get out of what we are currently doing and be someone different for those few moments. And whether we are being the storyteller or whether we are enjoying and engaging in storytelling with our children, you know, I'm going to demonstrate very quickly with you how this whole magical process is very much related to what you do in the invention process in terms of problem identification. Okay, so what's the whole problem when we read books and how can we, you know, apply what we learn in the invention process in storytelling? 
So there are many books you can choose, okay, but obviously, you know, since I'm a writer, uh, it only makes sense for me to choose one of my own books, right? So I have here today The Grady Bear Adventures. So Grady Bear Adventures is the third book for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a book where the bear goes on an adventure. So just as, after, as a little thought for you, if you are choosing what story to read, you know, I'm going to suggest any book with an adventure theme that's going to be really, really powerful for you to look for problems. Because, you know, as we all know, when we go on an adventure, what's going to happen? You can predict it. There's going to be, with adventure always comes, problems. Okay, so adventure books, if you had to choose, go for an adventure book. There's always going to be a lot of problems there. And here's how I'm going to read it with, you know, the children or oh, uh, here's how I would go into character. So bear with me a little bit here. In the story, we have Grady, and Grady is this bear, this wonderful cute bear. He is our main character. And as we all know, when we go in an adventure, the first thing is we go into a place that we've never been before. So when we are going into a place that we've never been before, what's the first thing that's going to happen? Yes, we are going to get lost. All right, and that's the first problem we're going to face, right? The problem is when we are lost, what happens to us? What can we do in that situation? So here I have, you know, I'm ready on book three. Okay, so in my book, the, the lostness happens very quickly. In book, in, on page three, immediately, as you can uh, here, see, the bear is lost. And he's lost in this wonderful new place, which is called, you know, the giant... It, it is called the Giant Beanstalk Forest. Now, the Giant Beanstalk Forest is borrowed from Jack and the Beanstalk, who, you know, in the fairy tale, he grows a bean into a beanstalk. Now, the question here is what happens, you know, after many years when that beanstalk is allowed to grow? Well, it evolves into a giant beanstalk forest. So very cute, and, and these friends, they go into this beanstalk forest and they are lost. So here... When they are lost, what happens? How do we solve the problem of when we are lost? They meet a character. And on this page, you know, the, the, the character they meet gives them some clues as to who he is without telling him themselves, without telling him who they are. And he goes, when I play, I make noise. When I, who am I? What can I do? You, young brown bear, solve my riddle. So here in the book, you know, the children are, met, are made to solve a riddle and that is another problem they have to face as to who is this character and how can the character help them get out of the beanstalk forest. Now the character turns out to be a wind character, which then takes them out of the situation they are in. Now, as we know, all adventures are not adventures and all stories are not stories without a evil character, right? This is your nemesis. This is your anti-hero, right? So what you want to be doing in any story you go into, you want to be looking for the anti-hero. And in this case, in our book, it is the orange paper cruncher. All right. Now, this is a book you no know, meant for young children. So PG, PG. Right here. So here we are not talking about killing the animal. We're not talking about killing anyone, but we're really talking about how the children come up with a plan to put that character to sleep. Wonderful plan, right? That's exactly what we do in the invention process. We identify a problem and then we go, okay, let's come up with a plan. This is what we want to do. Okay, but what happens to some of our plans? They don't often go our way. And in the same thing here, on page 10, Neither do, the uh, neither do the kids' plans. The children's plans fail, right? And this is what we talk about in the invention process. So the whole question is what happens when, you know, something fails? What do we do? What did the children do? So the children, since plan A failed, they just merely then went, well, if plan A didn't work, let's come up with plan B. Let's think on our feet how we can come up with plan B. And that's what exactly they do here and the cat here comes up with a good idea that they said, well, since plan A failed, plan B is let's put this monster to sleep by singing. So the kids, the children start singing and eventually, you know, in the story, they put 
they put the the hero the heroes put the anti-hero to bed and that's all wonderful thing but that's not the end of our story if you remember in the start of the story the children go to a place that they do not know of so guess what's another problem that would come up for them when it's time for them to go home they have no idea how to go home and that's another problem so how do you solve the problem of if you don't know how to go home so that's where exactly the children find themselves on page 16 and they go oh no it's time for us to go home but we do not know the way home so they brainstorm new ways to handle this and it is the clever bee so Didi the bee is a very clever character in our book she's the one with all sorts of new ideas and she thinks on her well in this case she's not really on her feet she's flying but she thinks on her feet so as to speak and she goes let's follow these mice they follow us they seem to know where we came from i think they'll we'll be able to find our way home through them so the whole story then goes how the children backtrack through following the mice and they find their way home and that's how they resolve the problem and that is really you know, part of the story. Of course, I've missed out the exciting parts because you know, if you really want to tell the story, you can get the book and you can share it with your children. But the point here is that you can pick any book, find where the story goes, map it back to where the problem is and start asking you know, the child you're reading to and ask them, what do you think is the problem here? What do you think is going on here? Okay. So this is exactly how storytelling can be used in a very fun and in a different way for you to start, for a child to start to relate this story to what they have experienced in real life in the STEMI process. And um, you can choose many books to do it, but you know, I've chosen this book to do it. And uh, I hope you, if you have any questions, you can ask me how this goes or we can take it from the questions below from here as well. Over to you, Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue Ann. That is very interesting how within a book itself that you could identify quite a number of problems and actually trigger children to start thinking about solutions and also letting them experience that. It doesn't mean just because you have a solution, that solution will def definitely work to solve your problem. That's fantastic. Then. I would like to lead on from this book that you have written. Will stories work for older inventors, say teenagers? Yes, but obviously not a book that's meant for a seven year old. I mean, the, a, a younger book has lots of visuals and it's going to be really great for younger kids to engage them. An older child, as you know, in the STEMI process, um, they require something with a little bit more environment, a little bit more context for them to really consider issues they have not considered before. And I know I don't speak this alone when I know some uh, educators, they go, well, you know, a teenager might not have had a lot of world life experience and hence they might not know what are, the, what, are some of, what are some of the current issues and rather than force them to read the newspapers, you can really just choose stories with very rich context and different worlds. Okay, so what are some examples of this book? Uh, I have an example here. Um, it is Watership Down. It's written by this author, Richard Adams. And uh, it is a book about uh, how a group of wild rabbits, they have their natural habitat, which is in a burrow. It's destroyed because you know, the lands are being taken over by humans to make you know, new farms and new houses. So from that point of view, the children are immersed into a world where they learn about what happens and what's the impact of environmental um, you know, destruction when, your, when the natural habitats of animals are taken away from them and the animals have to then cope and come up with new ways of handling this. So these are some of the books that you can consider and there's quite a lot of them out there in the market. But essentially you are hunting for a book that provides a different context, right? As we all know, books, you know, and I'm sure if you look back in your own experience, books can bring you into a very different world and they can introduce you to many, many different uh, viewpoints, which you, we might never be able to, for example, if you live in Singapore, I might never be able to say, go to Africa 
or go to one of the big countries. And you could also just choose books that are based in that kind of context and then get a child to start to imagine or go into that world and start to see things from a different point of view. Okay, so the key here is really the questions that you put to your children after you finish reading the book. And that's the real, where the real magic is. When you ask them to just go, so, you know, what, what do you see here? And how, how does this relate back to, you know, what you did in STEMI? This is from an adult's point of view. Translate that into something simpler for a child to understand with you. you know, uh, when, you, when you fail, it's just like this character. You know, what was it like? For this character, how is it like what you experience or not like what you experience? So this is how I would handle it with a slightly older child. And, you know, it gives an older teenager a lot of things to think about as well and get them curious about the world around them in a different way. That, you know, it's not preachy and it's not talked down so much. You know, as it like as an educator sometimes, you know, it's, it's really about giving them a little space, but just planting the seed and then let that take from there. So, you know, th that will be how I was brought up at least. All right. Thank you very much. And um, so you have written a couple of other books that you mentioned earlier. So moving from the teenagers, let me go down to the younger ones because we have some of the um, educators in, in the audience. Um, do all your books that you've written so far work in the same way to encourage invention and problem solving? Well, they're doing different things. Um, in my first book, it was more about the Grady's first day. So the great first days are big things for young children. Whether it's going to school for the first time or whether it is meeting someone for the first time, there'll be a lot of first experiences for young children. And the first book uh, is really about that. And we know that when we go and do something for the first time, you know, it can be unnerving. So the whole idea there is if you are put into that situation, how can you manage it? And getting a child to talk from that point of view. Uh, which is quite similar to uh, when you are seeing a problem for the first time or you want a child to see a problem from a different point of view, they take a different viewpoint. And we can use the book to, to explore those ideas. Um, in the second book, in the second book is a little different. The second book is a common problem. It's a problem already identified, but many children would be able to identify with it, which is the idea of bullying. The question is, are you being bullied or are you the one bullying? And the book allows you to take on two different points of view and for children to really explore, you know, what is it, what does it mean to be a bully as well as what it means to bully someone. And taking on, again, different perspectives is uh, the main thing in the second book. Uh, and that's also another way that, you know, when we look at the invention process, sometimes when we receive feedback, you know, we want to use that feedback and make changes to our own inventions. And we want to listen to different points of views and to different groups of people and how they handle this by taking different perspectives. And that's what the second book is about. But yes, they are meant for younger children. So, um, uh, and it comes with lots of pictures. So it gives you a lot of opportunity to take the same book and you know spin off different things from there. So it works too, in my opinion, if you ask me. Yes, that's lovely. And I hear that you are coming up with your fourth book now. Is your fourth book in the same line, dealing with invention, problem solving? Well, the spirit... That's a sneak peek into that. Um, I, that's an interesting one. The fourth book is interesting because it is meant for younger children even, uh, children who are early readers. And the problem there they, what they would have is really the first thing, you know, how do they even help themselves read and how would they help themselves understand and listen to the sounds of the words and see the words on paper and follow it through. So the whole fourth book, the premise of it is really about helping themselves. And um, this is something that I think many children, uh, I, my hope is that they feel encouraged that but even when they come across a problem, which I'm sure when you're inventing, you're gonna have lots of problems. The whole idea is even when you are faced with a problem, how can you help yourself? And you know, the whole premise of that is really to inspire children to keep on trying, even though it seems uh, something very difficult. 
And uh, there's lots of fun in that book. There's a lot of sound words and a lot of actions, but I'm going to leave it as that, you know, uh, for now. And um, the whole idea is if you cannot solve the problem with your head alone, maybe try some other part of you that can help you. And uh, that's what I'm going to say for the fourth book. It's, it's, it's quite fun in that sense as well. All right. Thank you for that sharing. And attendees, just um, um, all those who are joining us in this webinar, we have Suan May Phillips here, who is a writer and a coach, and she's sharing with us about what is the problem anyway? How do you define a problem and how do you go about pursuing a solution through reading and storytelling? If you have any questions, please submit that through the Q&A. Uh, we have got about another 10 minutes um, to this, so we'll be happy to take your questions. And in the meantime, whilst uh, we're waiting to see if there are any um, attendees with questions, Suan, I would like to know, you know, as part of uh, problem solving, what are some of the books that you would recommend, whether they are for the older children or even the younger children, besides the books that you have written? Some books that you have come across that you think will be meaningful, even for our educators who are here um, among us, they might be interested to know, um, what are some of the books they could read to actually even trigger this thinking about problem solving or defining some? There's a wonderful book I read uh, when I was about 14 years old. It's a very thick book. Um, it's by this writer called Anne Ryan, and you know it's uh, it's called uh, Atlas Shrug. And in that story, um, it's a thick book, and there are many different themes. But the thing that struck me in this book is that one of the characters, and uh, she is a heir and she is she owns a, the railway. And, you know, the, the railways, as we know it, as uh, there's always a lot of problems and there are operational issues. There's issues she had with her brother who doesn't want to, you know, run the company with her, but only wants to take money from the company. And she every day she has to deal with different problems. And every day she would sit down and every moment she in through the book and she would solve different problems that would come up for her. It's very inspiring in, in the way it's written and the way that you know the, the problems are put forward and she solves them in that book. Um, the book is also, if you read it, you know, it has many themes there about how the more problems you solve, you get better at what you do, you become a master in that area. And it's a wonderful book. Um, and it really inspired me, this whole idea about how um, problems can be resolved if you would uh, put yourself in a different point of view and you look at it from different points of view as well. Uh, so that's that one I would recommend. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful book, but uh, some people get turned off by the sheer size of it. <laughs> you must have been very impressed to remember this book that you have read at the age of 14 and be able to relate to the problem through. I, 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 it left a deep impact into my life. And maybe that's where the teachers, educators, if you ever feel you don't know what book to choose, I mean, I'm going to say that there must be one or two books you read or you've heard somebody read growing up. And it's about picking it up and then just going through and see where the problem lies. And you can pick up themes from there. You know, um, most stories by its nature will have problems. That's that's the whole basis a writer writes from. There's always going to be a conflict and the conflict is the problem. So, you know, you're not going to be very hard pressed finding any book that has that, but it is about just finding one that is maybe more relatable to your audience. That's all, you know, so um, that's the premise all writers work, work from. We work off conflict in a book. All right, thank you. And we have um, from the audience a question here. Are there specific themes or topics that we should have conversations with children about to promote this thought process of identifying problems and coming up with solutions? That's an interesting one. Um... With a young child, the whole idea is to not turn them off. So the whole idea that you provide them a positive experience, all right, they might not even know what is a problem. As in, you know, if you give them the technical basis, they might not know what it is. It's just like how you teach 
a child how to read and write. You might not go into the pedantics of how you have teach taught the child, but a child can follow through. So what's more important in young children is to encourage them, you know, to say, okay, if this is going on, what is the next step for you? What would you do? And the whole idea then, you know, the topic I would suggest then is to get them to imagine. A lot of children might not have enough um, context. They might not have had enough real life experience to really identify problems, but you can put them in different scenarios and have them have a think about it. So it's a little bit make believe at that time, but the whole idea is to start that habit and that mindset of thinking in a certain way. You know, and, um, and from there, that's going to encourage a child to go, oh, yes, I remember, you know, if it's like that, this is what we can do. So, for example, like in book one, you know, maybe a child hasn't been to school or they haven't been to a big primary school. And we are talking about going to school for the first time. And the whole idea is to taking them through that process and help them see in their heads. Oh, yeah. OK, if I go to school, then this is what could happen to me. Maybe I don't know where the toilet is, so I need to go find out where the toilet is. And this is about helping them prepare and plan so that they will feel less nervous about the whole thing. So that would be definitely uh, one thing. Um, the other themes and um, topics I would suggest, especially for older children, is really uh, things with social causes. Things that you know get a child to think outside what they are currently facing. So for example, if you are teaching uh, children in Singapore, and children in Singapore, basically, you know, we have a certain uh, attitude and maybe we come from a certain developed lifestyle. We don't really experience, say, war. We don't really experience hunger. We don't really experience that kind of problems that exist somewhere else in the world. And choosing books around those teams will allow your students or your children to see beyond what they are currently experiencing as a real life experience. You know, so. Uh, books that have a different context, books that speak of post-wars, or books that are about the war, books that are about maybe farming, books that are things that the child would not normally experience that will give them different things to think about. And they start to have an awareness about, you know, what other problems there can be in the world. So I would choose topics around that just to expand a person's, a child's um, uh, perspective of life, just to get that habit going. What's the problem here? What's the problem here? What's the problem here? Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, leading on, someone is very interested in your Grady Bear books and is asking, how many Grady Bear books are there and where okay. can they buy them? Okay, I wish that there were many, many Grady Bear books. <laughs> uh, at the moment, there are three and there'll be a fourth one coming out. So um, the fourth book is uh, expected to come out sometime by this year. But the three books, if you're interested and you're in Singapore, you can go to our website. That's uh, gradybearadventures.com. Gradybear How is it gradybear.com? Oh, I dear. think it's gradybear.com. Gradybear.com or not, if you like. If right now in the Z fairs, if you go to the Helen O'Grady um, well, booth, yeah. booth, you're going to see that you can also get the books there. There are three books there. Yeah, uh, especially meant for children between the ages of say five to about seven or eight, depending on your child. Um, if you are interested, you can also make a pre-order for the book that's coming out. That's meant for an early reader. Uh, it's really meant for them to read aloud by themselves, but you are welcome to read it with them. So altogether, there are four books and uh, those are the places you can get it from. All right, thank you very much, Suen. Yes, and um, to all our um, viewers, there is uh, a booth, a Helen O'Grady booth at the Fort Canning Center. It's a virtual booth. You just need to let your fingers do the walking and you'll be able to purchase the books from there. As part of this talk, Sue Ann will be autographing those books that are bought, selected from the booth itself. So if you would like personally uh, autograph books from by Sue Ann, please go ahead, uh, go to the Helen O'Grady booth, take a visit and select your books. And it will be delivered to you. So you do not have to worry about, do I have to go to Fort Canning to pick it up? No, you don't. All right. That's all the questions we have for now as we have hit to the end of um, Sue Ann's talk session. So thank you for the questions, everyone. 
we appreciate you taking time, um, Suan, to share your perspective and your experience uh, with us. Um, thank you everyone for joining us during this parent talk. Now, before I hand you back to our host, Madeline, who will be coming on roughly about 3.45, there are a couple of reminders, all right? This platform where you're now viewing is available to you courtesy of our sponsor, LDR Technology, for you to visit over the next two weeks until the awards ceremony on December the 4th. And the awards ceremony is going to be at 10.30, for an hour and we have special guest speakers. So I suggest do lock in on December the 4th at 10.30 to join us. And at the same time, if this weekend and over the next two weeks you have time, please go and visit the inventors booth as well as the sponsors booth and take a look to understand what our inventors have actually come up with in terms of the problems, statements, their definitions, and their solutions. And of course, all right, do purchase some books. And ID Academy is actually hosting um, three ducks design products modeling kits in Singapore. So for the school holidays, do keep the children engaged in inventiveness. They make great gifts for the mind and the fingers. So this is the end of this parent talk session. Thank you everyone for your participation and I'll see you on December the 4th. And thank you very much, Sue Ann, for being our judge and coming on today to share your perspective on storytelling and books on how to define problems. Thank, thank you, you everyone and have a lovely weekend. Have a lovely weekend, enjoy the booths. And so and let's have um, a picture taken together. Great. Lovely. All right. Bye, everyone.